everybody uh, welcome back to the channel again and in this one we're going to be putting the mag flange onto the crankshaft um, and then I'm going to leave it on its side this side basically overnight so what we need to do now is pack this bearing with grease and I've got bearing multi-purpose bearing grease take loads and loads and basically what you want to do is fill it up as much as you can to the um, the bearings themselves so pack it all around it it does take quite a bit I'm trying not to let any of it drop on the floor so pack it all the way in so it's lovely all the way around turn your bearings as well when you're doing this so there's no air up the other way we also need it on this bearing edge so it will just go over the crankshaft and I need a tad more than that probably about that much more because I can still see on the edge there on the inner that's perfect run it around I'll just take some of that off put it back in there and get me rag and wipe my hand What I also like to do is just put a rim of grease in here, just aids fitting the uh, the side of the mag flange in, because they should be a really good snug fit. That's perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the gasket out of the the box of gaskets and put some sealer on this side, the gasket, and the other side it's just another you know it's, as you build engines you get to know where they leak from and that that's a, a prime candidate so i'm using uh, loctite again mr5522 which is flange plate c dry hand and I should have got a basket while I was up. One mug flange gasket and it's got a little cut out in there that corresponds to that. You see that? that points forward right so just take that gasket off for a sec and we can put the sealant on the gasket or the face I prefer it on the face and put a bit on your finger and just bring it around like so make sure you get around all the, the screws You don't need uh, oceans of this stuff, it's just literally to seal. I mean, in the old days, they never used anything like this, but they weren't 50 year old engines, were they? They were brand new uh, and Italian, but that's another story. All right, so get that round there on the inside, right the way up, and all the way down. Then we'll get our gasket in place I don't need that much just a dab on there 
sealing it again. Yeah. I'll get a gasket on. I'm just going to wipe my hands. I don't want the, uh, the sealant going everywhere. As I said, there's a cut out there. Can go either way as long as the cut out goes to the um, the front. I mean, we do, we'll do it grey side out because that's why I've turned it over. But you just need to go over the screws and push down. That's quite a nice tight gasket that one. And push it flat. Perfect. And then we're going to put a beading on this edge of the flange all the way around there. So. I'll just put a load around it and I'll just spread it out. Never enough. I built tuned motors with uh, this gasket stuff and it, and it always seems to seal. You know, you see these horror stories where people have uh, done a lot of machining etc and uh, everything's leaking to hell when they're doing their leak down test. If it's built properly, my opinion is it shouldn't need a leak down test but it's, it is something I will be doing on this engine because for the simple fact I've never used these oil seals before so I'm just making sure there's a, a bead of, of uh, grease on there and it goes that way round. You can see the the level of the uh, grease that I've put in there. Just level with the, the crankshaft basically. So turn that over because it, the engine's upside down. Stick it over there. And home. Level home. which is not at the moment. Might need a little tap. Again, this is better to put the engine down on its side than what I'm doing here. That's not in at the bottom and also the gasket's catching, believe it or not. That gasket's been pushed in. that Let's try again that's a bit better but we're still at an angle on the top it just needs knocking along Check that's going in level, which is not. the top's not level. That's better. See, I can't, it should just fit in like that. I don't know why it, it won't go in at the beginning, but right, that's in on. I just want to turn that a few times again. When we tighten that down we need to keep spinning it as well because that's where the bearing oil seal will go down onto it so we need three flat washers and m6s and again like i keep saying put the uh, right in towards yourself that way you know next time you take it off which way round you had the nut if for no other reason then it just i think it just looks better like you know what you're doing even if you don't so again put that in there and then what we're going to do is finger tighten these up rotate the crankshaft a few times 
one more on the top. got these on a screwdriver attachment at the moment so just do one a little bit at a time a little bit at a time and what I'm going to do now is start turning the crankshaft over just a tight at the moment and keep turning that while I'm doing this up That's actually in place. That seems to be lovely. A little bit of grease there. And uh, we'll wipe the uh, flange sealant from here. And then we're going to tighten that up. That should be our um, crankshaft sealed at the bottom, the big end. All right. So again, if you know and you follow how I do bolts up, tight as you can do it first off. And then a quarter of a turn, so a quarter of a turn or an eighth, that's fine. That's fine. And spin that around. And I do believe that is lovely. That's turning dead easy. We just need to give that a wipe around. The seals in place on the crankshaft. It's about what 10 mil in from where the uh, the crank tapers off. So the inside one or the outside one, as we're looking at it, um, that one always seems to uh, go on very easy. I've never ever had a problem with that. You're relying, like I said to you before, on the the previous videos you're relying on the the spring to seal the um, the inner one the one that butts against the crank and if it doesn't you've got no no way of knowing until you start the engine up basically or you do a, um, a leak down test like I say this is what I'm going to be doing on this when it gets around to being finalized and the, you know and the uh, piston and uh, everything yeah, I mean I could turn that easy as Larry that's lovely that is but I don't mean to say that we're out of the woods again you can put the engine up on its tail and feel that and see if anything comes through but you've, it's got to get past grease on this side um, it's more the drive side and uh, the uh, the oil I put in on the drive side is all on the uh, top of the table now that's pretty good I mean, it doesn't have to be uh, so you can eat your dinner off of it it's just it's tidy I can use a bit of um, spirits on there if I want to what I'm going to do as well I've just realized that's quite sharp there for the cables I will run a file inside there just to open it up Dremel or whatever I've got a Dremel so if we turn the engine round to, to view it, there's our crankshaft, not rubbing on anything. I'll put a light in there so you can see. You know, that's, I could turn it with my hand on the crank, let alone the uh, the nuts. If it was really tight, you wouldn't be able to do that. And again, 
you know there's there's no play left and right at all there I'm, I'm more than happy with that and you can see where the gasket sealant is there that will dry up overnight um, I have ordered the barrel and piston now it's going to be a 185 186 kit and um, we'll see how good that is when it turns up and the uh, electronic kit will follow that I'll show you how I time an engine from scratch the basic way if you're doing it and uh, you haven't got a flywheel and stator plate is you can use the position of the woodruff key so you can physically see where the crankshaft comes out on its furthest travel which is there so what you do is mark where the woodruff key is in relation so you know that's top dead center so um, if you mark 17 degrees away from that you know where you need to line that up so you don't actually need to open that again um, I, I have been doing my engines on 19 I did move my GP to 17 and it, it, I can't see any difference to be totally honest with you but uh, what the people who are experts are saying is that the crappy um, gasoline, petrol etc we're using and when they do move to the 10% e ethanol um, you're going to need that timing set or the engine's going to run lean and hot and it, you know the results of that are hold pistons etc but I'm more than happy with that that's all bolted up and in so uh, uh, the, the next video is going to be the rear shoes I'll show you how to to do them they look like they're on at the moment but they're only I was testing that all the components are there uh, I haven't put the lever on etc and the um, the seals are not on there the spring holding it's on but we'll go through what to grease what to look out for these are original Innocenti GP um, brake shoes I've got two sets of them so now I've got one set um, I could have quite easily put LI on and just change the, um, the cam there to the larger one um, it just confuses people if you're selling them a GP engine you want GP inside it don't you I'd hate to think that you know I've been sold a GP engine and I've got LI side casing LI shoes in it you know you just you don't know what to order do you end up ordering stuff twice but hey ho so the next video i'll go through and i'll show you this how it goes on um i've ordered a gearbox so that's not going to be here for a while i've ended up uh, buying the the gearbox i gearbox i wanted from it's coming from india um just found over here that they're either worn out or people want ridiculous amounts of money for for Indian stuff you know at one time people would touch it um, I suppose there's nothing else left now and um, they just want to cash in you know I can't blame people it's just not for me you know I'd rather pay a reasonable price um, we'll get a breakdown of all the costs of all the bits when when I finish this engine like I say I'm going to probably sell it at cost because I've got no need for it um, it's just a project to show people how to put an engine together and what to look out for um, and I was leaning towards a, a standard 150 rather than a chimmed up um, engine it's just I do like the aluminium barrels the cooling on them and you know the extra performance you get out of them even the bad ones are miles better than a standard barrel um, if they're set up properly of course because you can have the best equipment set up rubbish and you know where I'm going with that so right so we'll end this video here we've got our mag side on cranks turning with very or little or no effort I don't know if I could no I can't turn it with two yeah I can two fingers just about I can from here yeah, dead easy and if I lift that up that noise that you can hear silent I'm more than happy with that I've got a new big um, small end bearing to go in I've got some racing ones and like I say we'll see how good this 186 kit is and um, it will have electronic on here and um, I'll probably put a, a 42 mil clubman on it and a rear hub so um, whoever buys it's going to be buying an engine that once it's um, plugged in should be able to run from 
uh, from the go get you know um, we need to test it obviously prior to um, selling it so it will be a running tested engine we we'll have to try and make some sort of um, frame up to um, so that I can start it and uh, run it um, that was one of the reasons why I bought a new uh, pole for there um, it is a stainless steel so yeah it's uh, there's a lot of good components going in the engine so hopefully at the end of the day we're going to have a really nice uh, engine and um, you know and it'd be worthwhile this project showing people what to do so right thanks for watching and that's uh, another video thank you bye